top of the food chain, rock with a rat tail, king sanitation, cover that the trap mail. Yo guys, what's going on? Timpus here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys some basic tips and tricks. It's just going to be a very basic tutorial on pixel art. This was suggested by you guys. Plus, I've just really wanted to show you guys just the basics. Um, but I'll be doing very um, like more advanced stuff in the future and then just more specific tutorials on how to do certain things like effects and other stuff but this tutorial is very basic i go through a lot of things um so yeah i hope you guys do enjoy this video if you do hit the like button down below subscribe if you are new let me know what videos you'd like to see from me next also i do stream on twitch there'll be a link in the description and there'll be um, a link on the screen right now um, i stream daily and i'll show you guys just I just uh, stream like myself designing so you can learn just by watching me. Also I do giveaways so yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and let's just go get straight into it. Right guys so we are here in Photoshop so I'm just going to open up um, uh, a document, just a random document that I can just show you some basic stuff in. So I'm going to do 3840 by 2160, 300 resolution and make sure it's set to pixels. Um, and that's basically equivalent to 1920 by 1080. So if I just create it, um, yeah, we've got this document right here. So I'm gonna show you guys how to correctly set up your like pixel art canvas. Um, so what you wanna do is, obviously this is a really big um, document that we've got open right now. So if I use a pencil tool straight away to draw, it's uh, tiny. We need to be uh, working on a small document. So what you wanna do is go to image, image size and I'm just going to take off a zero but what you can do is so 384 by 216 that's like a good amount of pixels that's a lot of pixels so when you're making your pixel art it's actually going to be very you can create some really detailed stuff um, but if you click on width or height and make sure that this is uh, checked this little link right here that means it stays in proportion. So you can actually drag this to the left and you can make the canvas smaller so you'll be working with less pixels and you'll the pixels will actually look bigger because it needs to fill up the canvas. So if I just show you, if I drag this down a lot, it's gonna be very small. So I just wanna zoom in and the pixels are gonna be this sort of size. Whereas if I go to image, image size and bring it up a bit to about 400, which is what I usually work on because I like to make mine quite detailed, mm. especially if I'm doing like a starting soon screen or um, just anything this sort of size, like a screen sort of size. Um, I like to work on 400 by 225. So if I press OK now and then zoom out a bit, as you can see, the pixels are very uh, much smaller, but not too small that you can't see what's going on. It's a very good size. Um, but yeah, this is for the sort of size that I use when I'm making my sort of work. Um, but one thing that you need to remember, so I've scaled it down now, but when once you've finished your work, um, you need to scale it back up to its original size. So I'd scale it up to 3840 by 2160, which is HD 4K. Um, but yours will be set to something different. I'm not too sure. It could be per cubic um, sharp, sharper. It could be something like that, but you need to make sure it's set to nearest neighbor hard edges um, so that when you do scale it back up, everything stays in this, all the pixels stay in the same position and you will have a HD image. If it's set to something different, which I will show you guys this after um, to show the different results. Um, but anything different to nearest neighbor hard edges and you'll have a very low quality blurry image so it needs to be set to that a lot of people have been asking me why my work isn't hd this is why you need to have it set to nearest neighbor hard edges so let's just scale it down and we'll just drag it to like 400 or something and i'm just going to draw some basic stuff with you guys so yeah um what you need to remember is Go over to this pencil tool and it, need, it has to be set to pencil. You've got the brush and the pencil tool, make sure it's set to pencil. Or you can just press B on your keyboard. Um, remembering the different keyboard shortcuts is also very useful within, um, within pixel art or just Photoshop in general. But 
yeah, you've got the pencil tool, you've got the eraser tool, but when you click on the eraser tool, um, there's this mode at the top, it will be set to brush, and you wanna set it to pencil, so that erase, it can erase um, individual pixels. So if I just draw a line right now, like so, and it's set to, if it goes to the eraser tool, if it's set to the brush, um, sometimes the brush is good to give nice effects. Um, um, yeah, it can give some nice effects if you erase it, like say if you're having a shadow, if, if it's black, um, it's nice to do that. But a lot of the time it needs to be set to pixels so that you can actually, if you're making a mistake, you can just quickly erase the, the pixels that you want to erase. But I can't actually do that right now because I did it on the background layer. <laughs> but yeah, you guys get the idea. Another thing that I want to show you guys is um, if we just add a new layer this time. Um, say if you're drawing something like a circle, um, like so, you don't want to draw it freehand really um, because it's just not very accurate. Um, but if you do, I'll show you guys why. So if I say if I draw a straight line. Um, it's nice, that, that line's actually not too bad to be honest, but um, you do have these jagged ed edges right here, which is not what you want, so I'm just gonna erase it. This would be the perfect line. Um, you don't want any jagged edges, like look at that. You, um, these, these like jagged edges, these extra pixels, you don't want them. And to like avoid that, what you wanna do is Hold down shift when you're drawing things and you get really, really smooth lines. So if I just press in one area, if I want to make a, like a circle or something, it's not going to be accurate, but it's going to look a lot better than what it did if I hold down shift because it creates straight lines and you don't get any of the jagged edges. You get a line that, yeah, is just nice. And that works with anything really. It could be you're drawing a house or something. Hold down shift and you can get some really nice lines and stuff like that. Um, or say if you're doing a hill. Um, if you draw it like that, it might not look great. But if you hold down shift, you can get it perfect. So you get like a nice little hill like so. So I'm just gonna show you some like basic things when creating pixel art. Um, I'm just, yeah, I've got a new layer. So let's just like create um, um, a hill with a sky and a cloud. Let's just do that really quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna choose a, a nice blue color, maybe a bit lighter, something like that. It's kind of nice. And what I'm gonna do is just pre press Alt backspace to fill in the background. You don't have to go to the pen tool tool and draw the whole entire thing. And then I'm gonna add a new layer and we'll just create some grass. So let's just choose like a dark green sort of color, like so. And I'm gonna make the hill and we're gonna hold down shift whilst we're doing it. So like so, just hold down shift and you get some really nice lines. Like so, and then press G on your keyboard. Um, the paint bucket tool, um, I don't know if I said this before, but it's very useful. I find I use it a lot within my pixel art just to fill in shapes and stuff. So you don't have, you don't have to press the pencil tool and like fill it all in, but you can do that. If you press down control, alt, right click, <clears throat> and then drag to the left or right, you can increase the size of the pencil tool. And you can do that, but it's just so much easier pressing G on the keyboard and filling it in. So the next thing I'm, I'm gonna do is behind the hill, I'm gonna add a new layer, go to the pencil tool, and I'm gonna choose like a, I'm gonna go to like blue and choose like a gray blue sort of color for the cloud. And then control alt right click and bring it down a bit. And we're just gonna create a cloud. Now this is where having a graphics tablet can help. Uh, I'm using my, um, laptop tracking pad right now so it just doesn't look very good um, but yeah if you take your time if you don't have a tracking tab if you don't have a, a graphics tablet you can create some nice stuff if you take your time but I'm just gonna go really quickly right now because it's a, a tutorial but yeah you can create some nice clouds 
Um, for this sort of stuff, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's a cloud, so you don't have to hold down shift, but things that need to be perfect, like say a house, um, just normal stuff yeah, that you really need to hold down shift, but for clouds, you don't have to hold down shift because they're actually really random. So I filled that in with G. You need to make sure it's connected though. So if I just hide the, the hill, I connected it at the bottom and then you have to press G to fill it in. Um, but yeah. I'm going to just draw another cloud right now. Um, and you can use references off Google and stuff or Pinterest um, if you really want to. But yeah, that's a basic cloud hill and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to do more in-depth tutorials. Like This is really basic stuff on how to use uh, Photoshop for pixel art. And there is actually other programs you can use for pixel art, but I think Photoshop for me is definitely the best. Um, I'm also going to show you in a second um, where you go to animate your work if you want to animate it. It's, um, yeah, you can do it in After Effects, but if you do it in Photoshop, I think it just looks a lot better um, and it retains the pixel art style if you do it within uh, Photoshop because it's frame by, frame by frame work. Whereas if you do it in After Effects, it's motion, so it looks a bit different. Um, but yeah, so if I was to skip, if I was finished right now, um, <laughs> I could have probably done a lot more to this, but let's just say I'm finished with it. Uh, I'm gonna go to image, then go to image size, and we're gonna scale it up to what it was before, which was 3840, and yeah, then the height does it by itself because it's linked, 2160. And if it was set to something other than nearest neighbor, let's just choose this one right here. If you press OK and then we'll zoom out, it actually makes it look really blurry and not high quality whatsoever. And that's not what you want at all. So um, yeah, make sure you do this. What I'm about to show you now, go to image, image size, and then nearest neighbor hard edges. And then we'll just put it back to what it was. Press enter and then zoom out. And as you can see, everything stayed the same. It's high quality. All the pixels are in the same position, as you can see. Very sharp, which is what you want. Um, and yeah, so let's just say, let's just go back. Say you wanna do some animation within Photoshop. Um, what you'd want to do is go up towards window at the top and go all the way down to timeline. And as you can see, a little box has popped up right here. And you've got two options. You've got video timeline and frame animation. Um, what you want to do is do it within frame. That, this is what I do it in frame animation. That's what I'm most familiar with. And then you just want to press create frame animation. And then you get this. So that's the first frame. And what you can do is if you add multiple frames, like so, you get these frames on here and you can you can do your art on top of these frames, or I usually just delete it, delete these frames. Um, but yeah, what you need to know is these little things below, these little seconds, this is the amount of time between each frame. So right now there's zero seconds, so it'll just play really, really quickly. Um, but what I do is I usually set um, it to 0 0.1 seconds. I find that's a really good time to do, I'm just going to delete all these. So whatever you do on the foot, you've got to press delete down here. But yeah, you've got like a little play button. You can go back a frame, forward a frame, back to the start. And you've also got onion skinning, which is this one right here. So if I just add a new layer, you can go into onion skinning, which will show um, like a faded version of the um, frame before. And then this is add a new frame. And then this will just, this is like if you want the animation to keep playing over and over, play once or three times, and then you can just choose how many times you want it to play back. And I just play it for forever. So but once you play it and it gets to the end, of, at the end of the animation, it'll replay. So I'm just gonna like add about 10 frames and I'm just gonna delete all these up here. So let's, Let's think of like an animation. 
I'm just gonna think of something really, really simple here, and it's gonna be nothing. I'm just gonna draw like a cloud moving back and forth. So I'm gonna go to the first frame and just add a new layer, and we're just gonna draw a cloud, a very basic one, like so. Um, I'll do a more in-depth tutorial on stuff like this, so stay tuned. So yeah, if I just press play now, nothing happens. So what I want to do is just look at how quickly it's going. It's going pretty quickly, so I don't want the animation. I'm just going to make it move back and forth, like left and right. I like to use the arrow keys to do this. It's very, very handy. So okay, we need to move that. Um, so I'm just going to go to um, frame three and four and then seven and eight and maybe move it to the right once. So it's just moved right on these frames and then the other frames it stayed in the same position. So if I play it back, first frame and second frame, they're in the same position, third and fourth, it's moved. So if I press play, it goes back and forth like that. And, they, and then once you get to the end, it'll replay back to the start. So yeah, that's just how to do basic animation. Um, if you practice, you get very good at this. I'm still a, um, quite a beginner at stuff like this as well. I'm still very new to pixel art. I've, only, I've been doing it less than a year, so I'm, I'm still very new to it. But yeah, that's the basics of animation. Um, and yeah, um, I'm trying to think of what else I can teach you. Oh yeah, so if you wanted to save this uh, and have the animation running as well, you'd want to go to File, Export, Save for Web, um, this is after you've scaled it up, by the way, you need to scale it back up. But if you want to save it as an animation, you want to save it as a GIF. If there's no animation, then you can save it as a JPEG or a PNG. Um, and yeah, those are just some big tips you need to remember. If you save it as a GIF, you don't really need to mess about with anything else. Just keep it as it is, I think. And then the same with a PNG and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this is a very, very basic tutorial. Uh, I just taught you some very simple stuff that you can, um, that you need to know about, like scaling it up, um, and then just some basic animation work, and just nice, some cool tools that you can use. But I'll definitely go in depth with some more pixel art stuff. But yeah, with that all being said, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, smash the like button. Can we break 100 likes? That would be crazy. Um, I've got a lot more tutorials on the way and I can't wait. Um, subscribe if you're new. We're getting close to 41k. That's crazy. Um, follow me on Twitter at TimpusHD. There will be a link in the description. Also for my Twitch, that'll be in the description, which I do stream daily on. I'll be streaming um, tonight. Um, and yeah, I just do pixel art and giveaways. So yeah, be sure to come to my Twitch streams, guys. Uh, link in the description. And yeah, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video.